let's give you guys a little bit of an update for the Triumph 17, because this shoe is red hot in more ways than one. If this is our first time meeting, very nice to meet you. My name is Brendan and I am a non, non, non elite runner who wants to share the joy of shoe reviews, running, marathon training, endurance training, all that good stuff with you fine folks. So if that's something you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button right down there somewhere. And if while you're down there, step all over that like button, would you? All right, let's get into the Triumph 17. There's a Hornet over there. So we, we gotta be a little bit quick with this. So we're gonna actually start from the outside up. So for the outsole, we have 50 kilometers on this so far and I'm seeing absolutely nowhere. It's just like the day I bought it, seriously. Look how, look how thick that rubber is, guys. It's freaking crazy, but that adds a lot of weight. So that would explain why it's over 300 grams for 10 and a half. Oh well, so the outsole, I'm very, very happy with it up to this point. I, I, I think it's gonna last way longer than the midsole if I'm being perfectly honest. So that's a good sign, getting our money's worth. So I'm gonna have to give the outsole so far a three to three because having no wear whatsoever, still looking like a beauty. I have nice grip on wet days for the gravel. I don't think I'd bring this on any crazy trails like running up the side of a mountain. Like if you're Seth James Damore, I wouldn't take these up the 14ers, but definitely fine for gravel paths and not that type of stuff. So if you are someone that just likes to go through like would it pass and all that stuff, you wouldn't have any concern with the grip on this outsole right here. Moving on to the midsole. Now this midsole, you know what? It kind of took a couple runs for it to really wake up. I think it probably was after probably two or three runs, I really started to feel the beauty of this midsole. So it was never firm, but after you warm it up, Oh my God, it's like you're running on clouds, but you're not sinking into them. You're just being pushed up again. It's nice and caressing, very nurturing, but then it's gonna help you upwards again. It's not gonna keep you down there. So I've run in quite a few shoes that are really sinky feeling and you kind of feel like you're mushing all around and it's nasty, but this Power Run Plus midsole folks, it's kind of what dreams are made of, if I'm being quite honest. And I know I've said that about the Hoka Rincon. I love this midsole so far. Now, I, I'm kind of curious how long it's actually gonna last. Just cause it's so squishy, I don't know if it's gonna last the long miles, but I'm gonna say at least 300, 400 miles. So for the midsole, I think I'm gonna have to go with the three to three again, quite honestly, cause we're not seeing any creasing or anything, no wear and tear. It, the Power Run Plus stuff is very fantastic. So three to three for that midsole still after 50 kilometers. Moving on to the upper. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this upper is extremely comfortable and that's the biggest pro. I like that there's nice memory foam in the back, the heel counter is nice and solid, but if you don't like a very big built up heel counter, stay away from this guy, but I really, really enjoy it. It gives that nice lockdown feeling. My heel feels nice and plush, comfortable. It can get me through the miles. The tongue is very, very padded, almost memory foam-like as well. But this is where the downsides come, start to come in, guys. It's extremely hot. So I started wearing it like middle of May, early June, and these temperatures are getting upwards of like 25, 30 degrees Celsius in my area, and it's extremely hot. Like by the middle of a run, my feet are extremely hot, almost sauna-like. At the end of the run, especially this heel counter right around here is starting to get literally wet. I I'm really sorry for that visual, but I, I can't lie to you guys. It's starting to get wet. Another downside for this upper is that because the tongue is so built up and the laces are also quite big, I, I don't know if it's the laces have anything to do with this, but I feel a lot of pressure on the top of my foot. But that also, is great for the lockdown. So I like that nice lockdown feel, but there's definitely some pressure. And if I don't get the lockdown just right, kind of discomfort on the top of my foot. This upper is very built up all the way through. The toe box is nice and roomy for me, which I really enjoy. It's true to size. It's not too narrow, not too wide. It's just right for my foot. But guys, I don't know if I can wear this 
during the summer months. I really don't know because of this upper being so hot. And it's it, it's an absolute shame because I really, really love the midsole and the upper so comfortable, but it's just too hot for right now. So this shoe may actually go into the closet for the next couple of months and I'll bring it out for that fall temperatures. I don't know though. I really, maybe I'll do early morning runs and wear this and a days like today where I have to wear a sweater, it wouldn't be so bad to wear it out, but I'm telling you, anything above 15, 20 degrees Celsius, this upper is a sauna for your feet. Now, if you are someone that just loves to have hot feet, then all the power to you. This upper is gonna treat you well. So overall, would I recommend the Triumph 17 to you fine folks? I'm gonna have to say, yes, I will recommend it, but if you live in a hot climate, make sure that you take into consideration how warm this upper is gonna be for you. Maybe reserve it for the colder days, uh, yeah, guys, I, I really wish I could wear this shoe every single day, but I, I just don't want to have that smelly of feet, if I'm being honest to you. And talking about smelly feet, shall we do the sniff test after 50 kilometers? Surprisingly, not bad. Surprisingly, it doesn't stink too much, but I'm sorry, Triumph 17, you're going to have to be reserved for the colder days. All right, guys, and that wraps it up for the video. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you want to see more videos about shoe reviews, marathon training, running, all that good stuff, try clicking a video over here somewhere. And of course, if you haven't already and you want to hear more about running shoe reviews, marathon training, running, anything endurance sports related, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will catch you on the next one.